It was a star-studded occasion of Hollywood glamour that was hosted by Prince Charles, featured a house music DJ, and concluded with an impressive fireworks display outside an historic 17th century venue And Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's wedding reception is also said to have featured a naughty speech from best man Prince William, a thanks from Meghan to the royal family for welcoming her in, and a surprise from compere James Corden The dinner party at Frogmore House in Windsor Great Park came after a multicultural and US-influenced wedding featuring an astonishing host of Hollywood guests including George Clooney, Oprah Winfrey and the Beckhams the likes of which Britain's royals and the millions watching have never seen before Later on the reception Harry's favorite house tracks curated by DJ Sam Totoli, who also performed at Pip Middleton's wedding and a drinks of the world themed bar and their first dance was said to have been Whitney Houston's I wanna dance with somebody giving a further nod to Meghan's American heritage Also on the menu were candifless and dirty burgers as midnight snacks while one source reported a cocktail featuring ginger and rum was on the menu as a cheeky nod to Harry's red hair named when Harry met Meghan The sit-down dinner was organic, sourced at the request of Prince Charles, and the light bite canips were themed spring meets summer The meal, paid for by the Prince of Wales, ran from 7.30pm to around 10pm. There were said to have been naughty speeches from William, and a joint effort from Tom Skippy and Scoop and Tom Van Strabenzi Meghan is also thought to have thanked the royal family for welcoming her in. Guests are also understood to have returned to London late last night for an after after party at celebrity favourite Chiltern Firehouse in Marylebone. Another party had been planned in a soundproofed private home in Chelsea. In the afternoon, a grinning Harry is said to have turned to his guests, asking, Can anyone play the piano? Before Sir Elton John gave a moving medley of four hits your song, Tiny Dancer, Circle of Life, and I'm Still Standing Harry also said Meghan had navigated everything with such grace, adding, we make such a great team He is also said to have told his bride, I can't wait to spend the rest of my life with you The newlyweds shared tears, laughter and a passionate kiss in front of their hundreds of VIP guests dominated by Hollywood stars including the Clooney's, the Beckhams, Idris Elba, Oprah Winfrey, Tom Hardy and James Corden Missing from the day was Meghan's father Thomas Markle who was in Mexico after pulling out just days ago due to ill health following an extraordinary week that saw infighting between her estranged family, her nephews turning up to London uninvited, and her only relative at the wedding, being her mother Doria Ragland Meghan became the first mixed-race member of the royal family in an extraordinary journey for a girl born-in-law to a white father and African-American mother who fought her way through the tough world of show busyness to land a plum role in the TV series Suits Harry and Meghan's big day couldn't have been more different than royal weddings of the past, especially because the prince was visibly emotional throughout, and guests suggested it was the most diverse major event in the Queen's 66-year reign Around 200 guests joined the couple at the evening event at the 17th century Frogmore Mansion in the grounds of Windsor Castle, where Meghan Wearing an aquamarine ring which once belonged to Princess Diana, made a speech to guests They traveled in a silver-blue open-top Jaguar E-Type Concept Zero, which was originally manufactured in 1968 and now runs on electricity, on her way to the English country house which stands in the home park of Windsor Castle and is part of the Crown Estate 
it is only open to individuals on three days of the year. The bride's evening dress was designed by Stella McCartney and is a bespoke lily white high neck gown made of silk crepe, while her aquasura shoes were silky satin with soles painted in baby blue. Her hair, styled by George Northwood, was in a relaxed updo, with loose strands tucked behind her ears amid the breeze. She was spotted wearing the large ring on her right hand which once belonged to Harry's mother. A double-decker coach full of guests arrived at the entrance to Frogmore House for the evening reception at 7. A 15 p.m. The coach had arrived from Coworth Park Hotel in Ascot, where Princess Harry and William spent the night before the wedding. Princesses Beatrice and Eugenie arrived in a black Bentley at 7.30 p.m. while Sophie, Countess of Wessex, arrived just before 8 p.m. in a Land Rover Discovery. Actor Corton, who attended the ceremony earlier with his wife Julia Carey, was said to have played the role of host and entertainer for the reception. Guests invited to Frogmore House, a royal estate in Windsor Home Park, were given a few hours after the lunch to rest and change outfits. Earlier Meghan became the first mixed-race member of the royal family in an extraordinary journey for a girl born in Los Angeles to a white father and African-American mother who fought her way through the tough world of show busyness to land a plum role in the TV series Suits. Harry and Meghan's big day couldn't have been more different than royal weddings of the past, especially because the prince was visibly emotional throughout, and guests suggested it was the most diverse major event in the Queen's 66-year reign with heavy influences from the US and Meghan's mixed-race background. The prince had looked tearful when he saw his bride for the first time grabbing her hand telling her, you look amazing I missed you before tenderly lifting her veil. They will spend their first night as a married couple at Windsor Castle and are expected to return to Kensington Palace in London today. The new Duke of Sussex also said thank you, Pa, after his father Prince Charles walked the now Duchess of Sussex down the Isle of St. George's Chapel, having stepped in at the last moment for Meghan's father Thomas. Sir Elton John, who sang at Princess Diana's funeral in 1997, performed at the lunchtime reception hosted by the Queen in a poignant nod to Harry's late mother who died when he was only 12. All the senior British royals were also there to support the couple including Her Majesty the Queen, Prince Philip, Harry's best man Prince William and his wife Kate, who brought George and Charlotte but left baby Louis with the nanny. The former actress, 36, managed to make a tearful Harry giggle as they exchanged vows before being pronounced man and wife by the Archbishop of Canterbury Justin Welby. Despite being an Anglican church service it had a distinctly American feel with the US bishop delivering a passionate address that appeared to make some royal snigger and a gospel choir filling the chapel with music from Benny. King and Etta James. But there was also much of the great British pageantry that royal fans around the world love, all set in the fairy tale surroundings of Windsor Castle on a stunning May spring day. Meghan chose acclaimed British designer, Claire Waite Keller, the first female artistic director at the historic French fashion house Givenchy, to design her dress. She also wore a Queen Mary diamond bando tiara, loaned to her by the Queen. Oh, and the steps of the chapel, Meghan asked her new husband discreetly, Do we kiss? And Harry whispered, Yeah, before passionately planting one on her lips. Outside St. George's Chapel, 
More than 100,000 fevered well-wishers gathered in glorious British sunshine and cheered the couple as they started their new married life in the Grand Ascot Landau carriage. Meghan waved and smiled to the crowds and said wow to her new husband while, in his inimitable style, he said back, I'm ready for a drink now. As the newlyweds were swept through a Windsor greeting huge crowds waving union flags the VIP guests were taken up to the castle for a lavish lunch and drinks hosted by the Queen. Guests praised the relaxed atmosphere and diverse feel. Sarah Ferguson, ex-wife of Prince Andrew, said, I have had a lovely day and it is wonderful to see so many people out for this lovely occasion. The newlyweds had emerged from St George's Chapel to loud cheers from the crowd yesterday afternoon. Stopping at the top of the stone steps, the pair shared a kiss to the delight of onlookers. The couple were waved off and watched by members of the royal family as they left in an open top Ascot Landau for a carriage procession through Windsor. Prince George and Princess Charlotte, the oldest children of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, did not follow Harry and Meghan as they made their way back up the aisle. Instead, the youngsters held their parents' hands as they made their way out of the chapel. Mike Tindall was seen rubbing heavily pregnant wife Zara's bump as the congregation waited for Harry and Meghan to sign their register. Mr. and Mrs. Tyndall are expecting their second child. Few things illustrated the disparate cultural beginnings of bride and groom better than the religious figures who appeared at their wedding. Archbishop of Canterbury Justin Welby officiated with the measured solemnity common to Church of England services, while Chicago born Bishop Curry riveted the congregation with a fiery delivery of his Power of Love address. His speech touched on issues including slavery and poverty, even channeling the spirit of another celebrated black orator, civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr. While the bishop's performance may have been a break from the norm for the royal family, it delighted viewers in America. U.S. journalist Elamina Abdul Mama tweeted, a black reverend preaching to British royalty about the resilience of faith during slavery is 10 million percent, not what I thought I was waking up for, the royal wedding is good. Former British tabloid editor Piers Morgan added, wow. Still reeling from Rev Curry. What a moment. What a guy. He may have gone on a bit long, but as my youngest son just rang to say, Dad, imagine being a black American watching this wedding? It's historic and brilliant. He's right. Staples of gospel music set alongside traditional church hymns on the order of service handed out to wedding guests. Karen Gibson and the Kingdom Choir captivated viewers around the world with a performance of Stand By Me, written by African-American singer Benny King and This Little Light of Mine, a tune which colored the sound of the civil rights movement. Many wrote online that the performance had reduced them to tears. Ms. Gibson later told Sky News, both of those are gospel staples you know, they are very well known. Etta James has done this arrangement. We really enjoyed it, we really rocked up to that one, you know? It was great fun. Praising the address of Bishop Curry, she added, It's what we're actually used to, that's the flavor of preachers we're used to, so we were getting very excited. As the couple slipped away for the signing of the register during the service, another talented black musician, Sheku Kana Mason, took center stage. 
The British cellist winner of BBC Young Musician 2016 held the attention of the chapel as he performed several moving pieces which had been selected by the palace. The 19-year-old later told the broadcaster, It's such an honor, and it's something that you could never expect. I still don't quite believe it, so it's just an amazing experience. You could hear a pin drop as the 600 guests watched the British prince and American star say I do in the historic surroundings of the chapel at Windsor Castle. At midday, all eyes were turned to the grand door at the west steps to catch the first glimpse of Meghan as she appeared through the ornate entrance. Just before the bride arrived, the bridesmaids and page boys were ushered in by the Duchess of Cambridge, who helped coax them into their positions with an encouraging hand on their shoulder. The children were handed flowers behind the door when one of the little bridesmaids began to cry. With such a crew of youngsters following the bride up to the altar, it was unlikely to be plain sailing. The Cambridge's nanny, Maria, lifted the child up to comfort her as Prince George looked up at the tearful girl. George briefly chatted with his nanny, who helped to organize the group. Harry's niece and nephew George and Princess Charlotte were among the six bridesmaids and four page boys, all aged between two and seven. Harry's goddaughter Zaley Warren, two, and three year old Florence Van Cutsum, Ms. Markle's goddaughters, sisters Remy and Ryland Litt, aged six and seven respectively, and four year old Ivy Mulroney, the daughter of Meghan's close friend Jessica Mulroney, were bridesmaids. The other page boys were Harry's six year old godson Jasper Dyer, the son of Harry's mentor Mark Dyer, and Mrs. Mulroney's seven year old twin sons Brian and John Mulroney. A member of Prince Harry's household bent down to help to adjust one of the bridesmaids' dresses before their walk up the aisle. When Meghan appeared through the doors of the chapel, sunlight streaming in behind her, she turned to smile and wave at the children who were standing to her right. Her sparkling tiara dazzled in the light of the chapel. The gaggle of children toddled up the aisle behind Meghan through the nave before the bride was joined by the Prince of Wales, and the pair made their way down the aisle of the choir to where Harry was waiting. Guests turned to smile at each other after Meghan, and the children made their way past each pew, perhaps approving of the sumptuous bridal gown and ethereal veil, or admiring the children carrying out their duties with aplomb. A few minutes later, there were giggles when the Archbishop of Canterbury conducted the declarations. A loud and clear we will sound it out when the guests were asked if they would support Harry and Meghan. Meghan's mother Doria Ragland smiled at the Prince of Wales and took his hand as they joined the newlyweds in one of the chapel's transepts to privately record their marriage. There was a hush around the chapel as the wedding ceremony began, and the crowds listened intently as the Dean of Windsor, David Connor, started proceedings. The silence was only broken by the rumble of aircraft passing overhead and the odd champagne cork popping. The crowd in Horseshoe Cloister shouted a resounding we will as the Archbishop of Canterbury posed the question inside St. George's Chapel as to whether the families and friends of Prince Harry and Meghan would support them in their marriage. Meghan's delicate veil was five meters long and made from silk tulle with a trim of hand-embroidered flowers in silk threads and organza, with her two page boys carrying the ends as she made her way up the steps. Her hair was up, and she wore the glittering Queen Mary's diamond bandeau tiara, loaned to her by the Queen. 
the presiding bishop of the American Episcopal Church Bishop Bishop Michael Corey enthusiastically delivered a passionate address about the power of love, but it appeared to make many in the congregation laugh. It is expected to be the biggest royal wedding in Britain since Prince William married Kate in 2011 with more than 21 million UK households set to watch and 23 million expected to tune in from America. Ms Markle's wedding dress has been designed by the acclaimed British designer, Claire Keller, the first female artistic director at the historic French fashion house Givenchy. The veil was held in place by Queen Mary's diamond bandeau tiara, lent to her by the Queen, made in 1932 an outfit that left her mother Doria Ragland, 62, in tears. Meghan arrived accompanied by two page boys who held up her train as she made her way up the chapel steps alone and entered the chapel by herself to begin the walk down the altar before being met by the Prince of Wales. David Emmanuel, who designed Diana, Princess of Wales' dress for her wedding to the Prince of Wales in 1981, said of Meghan Markle's outfit, the bride is simplicity herself. He added, the dress is as I predicted simple, stylish, elegant and understated. I think the story is in the silk jeweled veil it encompasses all the Commonwealth flowers, which I think is very clever. Asked what he thought Harry's late mother would have said about the dress, Mr. Emmanuel said, I think Diana would have approved. Meghan's bouquet contains several flowers hand picked by Prince Harry from their private garden, Kensington Palace said. Prince Harry handpicked several flowers yesterday from their private garden at Kensington Palace to add to the bespoke bridal bouquet designed by florist Philippa Craddock, the statement said. The spring blooms include forget-me-nots which were Diana, Princess of Wales' favorite flower. The couple specifically chose them to be included in Ms. Markle's bouquet to honor the memory of the late princess on this special day. The bride's bouquet is a petite design, pulled together in a gentle, ethereal, relaxed style with delicate blooms also including scented sweet peas, lily of the valley, a still, jasmine and estrancia, and sprigs of myrtle all bound with a naturally dyed, raw silk ribbon. The myrtle sprigs are from stems planted at Osborne House on the Isle of Wight by Queen Victoria in 1845 and from a plant grown from the myrtle used in the Queen's wedding bouquet of 1947. The tradition of carrying myrtle begun after Queen Victoria was given a nosegay containing myrtle by Prince Albert's grandmother during a visit to Gotha in Germany. In the same year, Queen Victoria and Prince Albert bought Osborne House as a family retreat, and a sprig from the posy was planted against the terrace walls, where it continues to thrive today. The myrtle was first carried by Queen Victoria's eldest daughter, Princess Victoria, when she married in 1858. The Most Rev Bishop Michael Curry, the first African-American presiding bishop and primate of the Episcopal Church, gave an address titled The Power of Love at the Service in St. George's Chapel. He opened his speech with the words of civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr., who said, We must discover the power of love, the redemptive power of love. And when we do that, we will be able to make of this old world a new world. Love is the only way. The bishop then added, There's power in love. Don't underestimate it. Don't even over sentimentalize. There is power, power in love. 
The Episcopal Church is the U.S. offshoot of the Church of England and forms part of the broader Anglican Communion. Meghan was baptized into the Anglican Church, which is headed by Harry's grandmother. Bishop Curry told the service, there's power in love. Love can help and heal when nothing else can. There's power in love to lift up and liberate when nothing else will. Such power could be seen in the service, he continued, saying, two young people fell in love and we all showed up. Prince Harry looked nervous as he arrived at St. George's with his best man William, but quickly warmed up waving and grinning at crowds before greeting guests inside and outside the chapel. Her mother Doria smiled and looked adoringly at her daughter in the back of her wedding car, again supporting her in the absence of her father Thomas Markle. Mother and daughter drove away in a Rolls-Royce Phantom IV, which was built and delivered to the Queen in 1950 and used by Kate Middleton for her trip to Westminster Abbey when she married William seven years ago. The couple have invited 2,000 guests and have needed more than three hours to fill the church with friends including actor Tom Hardy, Carey Mulligan, tennis player Serena Williams and many of Meghan Suits co-stars all there. Harry's ex-girlfriends Chelsea Davey and Cressida Bonas were also invited and joined the Middletons and his uncle Earl Spencer in the giant congregation. Royals including the Queen and Prince Charles who will walk Meghan down the aisle after her father dropped out will be the last to arrive before Harry, William and finally Meghan, who will enter the church alone. Princess Diana's son's whirlwind romance with the US-born actress, 36, has captured the public's imagination and they will become the Duke and Duchess of Sussex when they marry. After a secret six-month free relationship the couple went public and later confirmed they got engaged in November when he proposed while roasting of chicken in his Kensington Palace flat. Their big day is finally here after a week of turmoil for Meghan after her father pulled out at the last minute and her estranged relatives flooded into the UK to cash in on her big day. Cheers and applause erupted at the West Door as Prince Harry and the Duke of Cambridge arrived at St. George's Chapel. The bridegroom and his best man were met by the Dean of Windsor. They stopped for a few moments and had a brief conversation before walking inside. Harry, looking dapper in his frock coat uniform of the Blues and Royals, walked up the aisle with his best man and was seen acknowledging a guest in the congregation with a nod. Both Harry and the Duke of Cambridge are wearing the frock coat uniform of the Blues and Royals. The Queen gave her permission for her grandson to get married in his uniform, Kensington Palace said. Both uniforms were tailored at Deej and Skinner on Savile Road. Tens of thousands of royal fans are in the Berkshire town to catch a glimpse of the bride and groom, as police have effectively created a pound 30 million ring of steel around a castle in a massive security operation. Many slept on the streets and more have left their homes in the middle of the night or traveled from across the world to see them. Revelers wearing wedding dresses, Union and American flags and other outlandish outfits have been popping champagne and Prosecco since 8 a.m. or earlier as they toasted the happy couple. The official 10 Downing Street Twitter account posted a message to the couple from Theresa May, saying, My very best wishes to Prince Harry and Meghan Markle on their wedding day. To all of those joining the national celebration with street parties and other events, have a wonderful day.
Meghan spent her last night of freedom at the Cliveden House Hotel around 25 minutes from Windsor Castle, where she will next see Prince Harry at the altar of St George's Chapel Last night she looked stunning as she arrived with her mother Doria Ragland, 62, after enjoying afternoon tea with the Queen Meanwhile her husband-to-be and Prince William enjoyed a walkabout through Windsor to meet the thousands of well-wishers who have gathered to see him get married As she walked into the hotel wearing a 1,350-pound navy Roland Mallard Barwick dress she grinned as she told waiting royal fans that she felt wonderful, thank you ahead of the biggest day of her life Beaming Meghan also gathered her closest friends, her dress designer and hairdresser to join her in 1,500 pounds a night rooms last night Prince Harry and Meghan Markle will be the Duke and Duchess of Sussex a title not handed out for more than 150 years The Queen conferred the titles on her grandson and his bride to be as they prepared to walk down the aisle at St George's Chapel, Windsor The royal groom was given a dukedom the highest rank in the British peerage to mark his marriage to Meghan Markle American former actress Meghan will now become Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Sussex on her marriage at the much-anticipated ceremony in St George's Chapel, Windsor Castle Harry also received Scottish and Northern Irish titles, becoming the Earl of Dumbarton and Baron Kilkeel, which means Meghan will become the Countess of Dumbarton and Baroness Kilkeel All titles are in the gift of the Queen, and it was up to the monarch to, to choose which one to bestow on her grandson and his new wife At the end of a dramatic week, sources said Harry and Meghan had just wanted to focus on their big day They are just so in love, and while it has been a hugely emotional week for Meghan in terms of her father, who she is still deeply concerned about, they now want to focus on the day, they said It's a huge moment for them, and they just want people to enjoy the day Another added, honestly, I have never seen him so happy He is just besotted and cannot wait to make Meghan his wife With Mr. Markle, a former Hollywood lighting director, recovering from surgery to fit a heart stent, Kensington Palace announced yesterday that Prince Charles would walk his future daughter-in-law to the altar Sources close to the prince, who will wear a morning suit, said he was deeply touched to have been asked It wasn't something he raised at all, the couple came to him, they said. The source added that Charles had met Miss Markle several times and appeared to have struck up a very genuine bond with her and now her mother Millions around the world will have watched, but America has been gripped by Meghan mania and US broadcasters have gone to extraordinary lengths to provide the best possible coverage for their viewers With prime broadcasting spots given to British TV, American networks have annexed several guest houses and hotels around Windsor Castle NBC is said to have taken over the McDonald Windsor Hotel, opposite the castle, with a team of around 300 The broadcaster has built an Olympic Stadium-like studio on the rooftop to achieve the best backdrops and have a view of the castle in the background Yesterday Meghan Markle's co-stars from the TV legal drama Suits appeared in the studio to tell viewers back home how she revealed her romance with Prince Harry Meanwhile, rival networks ABC and CBS are said to have removed windows from rooms at the front of the Hart and Garter Hotel at great expense to create the best shots 
and a two-story temporary media center has been set up on the long walk in Windsor Great Park solely for U.S. journalists to broadcast to fascinated viewers back home Broadcasters are devoting huge amounts of airtime to programs before and after the wedding, and most are broadcasting or streaming the ceremony live In 2011, the wedding of Prince William and Kate Middleton was watched by 23 million Americans, even though it was the middle of the night for many in the US But viewing figures are expected to be much higher for Prince Harry and Miss Markle's ceremony She also created the six young bridesmaids dresses in the Givenchy Haute Couture Atelier in Paris to have the same timeless purity as Ms. Markle's dresses. I in a statement released yesterday afternoon, the designer said that it had been an honor to work on perhaps her most high profile project to date. It is truly an honor to have been given the opportunity to closely collaborate with Meghan Markle on such a remarkable occasion, she said. We wanted to create a timeless piece that would emphasize the iconic codes of Givenchy through its history, as well as convey modernity through sleek lines and sharp cuts In contract, the delicate floral beauty of the veil was a vision Megan and I shared, a special gesture embracing the Commonwealth flora, ascending the circumference of the silk tulle As a British designer at a Parisian haute couture house, and on behalf of all of us at Givenchy who have been able to experience such an extraordinary process of creativity, I am extremely proud of what we have accomplished and grateful to Meghan Markle, Prince Harry and Kensington Palace for allowing us to be part of this historical chapter It has been an immensely rewarding experience to get to know Meghan on a personal level one I will forever carry with me The House of Givenchy joins me in wishing her and Prince Harry every wish of happiness in their future Meghan's choice of designer remained a closely guarded secret until yesterday morning and it was reported that even Prince Harry didn't know who she'd picked as he wanted a total surprise on the big day Speculation has been rife in recent weeks, but Givenchy was certainly not thought to be a frontrunner and failed to appear on the odds list being touted by bookmakers Givenchy isn't a label she's previously been associated with, and royal watchers were convinced she'd wear a designer she's previously stepped out in, such as Burberry Ralph and Russo was previously expected to get the honor, with the bride to be rumored to wear a hand-stitched and heavily beaded design with long sleeves However, Meghan previously made it clear that she favored a simple classic look for a wedding dress Speaking to Glamour before she emerged as Prince Harry's girlfriend, she called the late Carolyn Bissett's wedding dress as her everything goals Carolyn, then 30, wore a minimalist white gown by Narcissa Rodriguez, who was at the time a little-known designer to marry John F. Kennedy J.R. describing her dream dress, Meghan added, classic and simple is the name of the game, perhaps with a modern twist However British bridal designer Carolyn Castigliano claimed this week that Meghan had in fact given Stella McCartney the honor Stella is such a perfect fit for Meghan, she told the New York Post that she uses organic fabrics and her ethos is the same as Meghan Her style is very underplayed, her dresses are very clean in style, very much Meghan and they are friends 
she added, I believe it will be a very straight, faded dress with a big nine-foot train that comes off the dress from the side to create the drama and lace trickling down the top of it